I'm Rowan Daniels, and you're listening to Gay Dixie. I'm Chase Oliver, and this is Gay Dixie. So this is episode four, and later on we're going to be hearing from Roman Daniels. He's a uh, twink porn star from Helix Studios and a close personal friend of mine. So this past week, I went out to Lake Lanier with a couple of my friends, Colby and Sonny. Uh, they're two really cute guys, and we decided we'd go out to the lake and have a little fun uh, and shoot some video for the website. A lot of sunburn going on there, a lot of cute guys, yeah, a lot of cute guys in their uh, Speedos and You'll be getting to see that video real, real soon. And I really wanted to give a special shout-out to my friend Alden, who provided the boat and all the fun we got to have. He was an excellent host, and he is definitely an angel in my eyes here at Gay Dixie. And I also wanted to talk about a few things that we got going on in the news lately. I've been reading a lot. You know, Most of this is going to come from the Huffington Post, so I'm just going to say I'm going to cite them right now. I know they're liberal, and I'm not exactly liberal, but it's on my phone, so whatever. Read today that we had like a gay marriage victory in Virginia. The courts there decided that Virginia, which, you know, they say Virginia is for lovers. I guess the court said now Virginia is for gay lovers, too. And we can get married in the South now, you guys. It's amazing. So not just Florida, which is kind of the pseudo-South, but now we can get married in Virginia. And uh, this whole loss, you know, this whole uh, victory for us basically uh, could have far-ranging effects, you know, the, the court has jurisdiction over places like North Carolina and South Carolina and West Virginia, and once this whole thing goes into effect in August, it, there's nothing really stopping people in North Carolina, South Carolina, or West Virginia from issuing same-sex marriage licenses, so it's only a matter of time before it comes to Georgia. It's only a matter of time before I can get married in Atlanta or Tennessee or wherever the hell I want to get married, if I ever want to get married, I don't know, that's kind of a... Oh, who wants to get married anymore? Anyways, so um, in two weeks, it's going to be my birthday. My birthday is August the 16th. I'm a Leo, you know. And um, by the way, if you guys want to be generous and anybody listening out there, uh, if you, if you want to buy me something very nice for my birthday, I have this Amazon wish list right there at GayDixie.com. You just click it. It's one little click away. You click right through there, and there's tons of stuff. I'm not saying you have to buy me the twenty thousand uh, dollar mixer that we got on there. The, the, you know the the. I'm not saying you have to buy that, but there is a lot of much more inexpensive things that you know. If you want to show me some love for my birthday and you become and you like listening to me every week, and you would like me you know to be talking to you wearing a brand new shirt or whatnot, you know go on there and check it out. But uh, since my birthday is in two weeks, I'm going to be 29 years young. I'm almost 30. That's kind of freaking me out, but. I was kind of thinking about how far gay people have come in the 29 years since I've been alive. Like, you know, I was born in 1985. You know, uh, gay people weren't really that visible. And when they were, like on TV, they were basically just there for uh, to either be a real negative kind of stereotype or to be comic relief. They were basically sexless. They didn't date anybody or have any sex on TV. So it was kind of a shitty time to be gay, you know, in the media in the 80s, you know. And uh, now, if you look at every TV show that comes out, you know, Glee or Modern Family, anything, any of that stuff, there's gay characters everywhere. And it's not just one kind of guy, and they're not neutered. You know, they have relationships, and they have real lives. And, like, you know, that's a big thing that I think has changed the most in, like, the last 29 years. I mean, and there's a lot of things that used to be, I guess, considered okay that are now considered totally wrong, like don't ask, don't tell, and... uh you know, uh, gay marriage. I mean, who to thunk? Who to thunk we could get married in Virginia in 2014? I mean, I'll tell you right now. When I came out as a teenager, I thought I'd probably be like 50 or 60 before I could get married in the South. So it's amazing how shit changes real quick in uh, 29, 29 short years. And I got plenty more to come. I think you know, hopefully. Even though you know, when you hit 30, you're kind of considered a senior citizen out here in Midtown. You know, you're one of the old folks. But I've been there and I've done that, so I don't mind being an old fogey. Um, another thing I read in the news that I thought was kind of cool, you know, uh, anybody who knows me knows I love the WWE and wrestling and any kind of fighting, any kind of watching two guys nearly naked struggle with each other, that's kind of hot to me. But I love it because of the entertainment and the sport of it all. And I also like UFC a lot. And uh, so there's this UFC fighter, Kyle Kingsbury, 
and they do these weigh-ins. I don't know if anybody's ever seen one of the weigh-ins for UFC, but guys get down to their underwear, which is, I don't know, it's a subtle kind of homoerotic play to the gays, I guess, to get some gay fans maybe, or I don't know what the whole reason behind it is. I mean, they could they could weigh somebody in without them having to strip completely down, but whatever. So this guy, Kyle Kingsbury, I guess he's a uh, gay ally, and so he decided he was going to make a statement when he did his weigh-in uh, a little while ago, and so he decided to wear pink briefs with the words legalize gay on the back, and of course he made sure that everybody saw it. And uh, I think it was pretty kick-ass. I think it's pretty awesome that like a macho sport like the UFC, like MMA, can, uh, I don't know, have, a, have people who are like, hey man, I'm not gay, but, you know, I'm cool with gay people at least. Like that's, and it's only a matter of time before we have a gay UFC fighter kicking the shit out of everybody. You know, I imagine just like, you know, we got Michael Sam in the NFL now, and whatever that gay basketball player is, I don't really like basketball, so I don't know his name, but he's, he's gaying it up out there in the NBA. Um, and the last little story I wanted to talk about, and this is also going to lead into a little personal story of mine, is uh, it was Gay Days uh, recently out in Orlando, Florida, which is like, it's basically a circuit party at Disney World, and there's just tons and tons. I've been to one a long, long time ago, and it's basically just a big gay party. It's like gay pride out there in Orlando, and you get to see whatever. I mean, it, it's just basically a big party. And so um, the Double Tree Hotel down there, they're very gay friendly out there, and they were having their own Gay Days event going on. And this guy, uh, I want to, I want to shout out this douchebag named Jason P. Combs, and he owns a tow truck company out there, I guess, or he's a tow truck driver. He probably doesn't own a company. He doesn't seem intelligent enough to own anything. So I guess he probably works for a tow truck company. And he's now facing... Oh, he owns it. He owns it. Producer Dick is telling me he owns it. Well, I don't know how much he's going to be owning for very much longer because he's facing 29 counts of Grand Theft Auto after he allegedly, in air quotes there, allegedly, he did it. He uh, towed more than 100 cars from this event at the Doubletree Hotel saying that, I guess, because he wanted to say they were illegally parking, which they weren't. They had every right to be there. And he was targeting people who were there celebrating gay days because they were gay. And that's kind of fucked up. I think it's kind of rude. And it's not really a good statement for your business, especially in a place like Orlando, which hosts a huge gay days event every year and gets tons of money from it. It's not good, it's not good PR. So uh, I just wanted to shout that guy out. And I'm glad he got busted. And I'm glad he's probably going to spend some time in jail and probably pay a fuck ton in fines. And hopefully he has to sell his business to pay for that fine. I hope karma gets you, asshole, because you are, uh, you're my dick of the week. I'm just going to say, you're probably the biggest dick I've read about this week. And there's a lot of, I mean, I see a lot of assholes. I mean, there's Sean Hannity that I see from time to time. I listen to him in the car. You're a bigger asshole this week than Sean Hannity, and that's saying something. And uh, so this leads into kind of a personal story. I have my own Gay Days story. Now, I said earlier that I had been to Gay Days, and it was a long time ago. It was when I was about 12 years old. Um, I was in the middle school band. I was a drummer the band. Uh, yeah, I was a band geek. And uh, we planned, as the band, we were going to take a trip out to Disney, and Disney invited us to come perform for them this particular weekend. And what we didn't realize, it was the same weekend. See, Disney doesn't organize gay days. So they don't really have an idea necessarily exactly of when it's going to be. So they scheduled us to come out during this weekend. And a few months later, the gay days planning committee, or whoever, planned for Gay Days to be that very same weekend. So it turned out that our middle school band, a bunch of 12-year-olds, were going to be performing at Walt Disney World in the Magic Kingdom for this huge party of gay and lesbian people, which uh, for a 12-year-old me who was totally in the closet, I knew I was gay. I, kn- I very much knew I was gay. And so for me, it was very delightful when they told me this. You know, they, of course, they sent out a warning to all the parents, you know, just just so you know, we're going to be sending your children into a den of homosexuality. So I, it was my first glimpse kind of of gay culture and of kind of my first gay pride, I want to say. It was almost my first pride festival. And it was really special. And I do have to say it was kind of awe-inspiring to uh, be in the middle school band. And so we're playing in front of about a, probably a few hundred people on the little stage. And there's all these gay couples and they're holding each other and they're just crying their eyes out while a middle school band shittily performs my Heart Will Go On from Titanic, which was the big song at the time. And, I mean, we played it as well as 7th and 8th graders could probably play that song, but it wasn't exactly spectacular. But we got a great reception there. It was, it was a lot of great fun. And 
I stayed a few extra days with my family. I got to go to the water park out there at Disney, and that was the first time I've ever been to a water park where nearly every man was wearing speedos or boy shorts, not you know, not the usual trunks I was used to. It gave my dad quite a shock. It was hilarious. I was just laughing the whole time on the inside. And so that's kind of my gay day story. I want to go back. I really do. I think it would be a hell of a lot of fun to go back. And now they got all that shit down there, you know, Universal. They got the Harry Potter thing. I don't know. It'd be kind of fun. Maybe we should take a gay Dixie vacation. Me and producer Dick can go down there. We'll, uh, we could do a road trip. That'd be a lot of fun. There's one more little story I wanted to talk about. And it's kind of Georgia-centric. I'm out here in Atlanta. We have a Senate race going on. It's between, right now, you know, they just had the primary runoffs. And now we know who the Republican and the Democrat's going to be. And that's going to be uh, uh, Purdue is the Republican and uh, Michelle Nunn, she's the Democrat. Now, I'm not going to vote for either one of them. I'm voting for Amanda Swafford, libertarian candidate. But this memo came out um, from Michelle Nunn's camp. It got leaked, talking about her fundraising and how much time she has to spend fundraising and you know, who her target groups are. And one of the groups she targets for fundraising is the gay and lesbian community. And, that's, you know, that's not a surprise. We tend to, you know, there's a lot of liberal base out there in the gay and lesbian community and I guess it's fine that she wants to take our money but uh it really kind of highlighted me reading this article about how much time she has to spend fundraising and how much how little time she actually spends like talking to people who aren't paying her a thousand dollars a head and it kind of made me think this is why I'm kind of voting for a libertarian candidate for a third party because I'm kind of sick and tired of uh having to buy our our access to our politicians I guess it's great for some people to spend $1,000 to go have dinner with Michelle Nunn, but it's not very fun for me, and I don't think I can afford that. You know, I'm, I'm middle class or below. I'm like most Americans in this country, certainly like most Georgians, and yet I don't get access to the candidate, and that kind of pisses me off, and it makes me think, why should I vote for her, and why the hell am I going to vote for Purdue? He's an asshole. I'm kind of left with the choice of the libertarian, and I hope everybody out there keeps an open mind, and I really would like more third-party people out there, you know, we're in a red state. Nobody gives a shit who you vote for. You know, we don't get the money. We don't get the ads. We don't get the access. We're not a swing state. Vote your heart. Don't vote, don't vote because you're voting for the lesser of two evils. That's, you're still voting for evil when you do that. And I think that's kind of a dumb thing. You know, I'd rather you, I would rather somebody, if somebody says, well, I'm going to vote for the Democrat or the Republican because they're the lesser of two evils, I would rather you just sit out on election day. I only want the people who are passionate for the candidate to be going out and voting for that candidate. I don't want you voting against somebody else. Like if you like I didn't like George Bush and I voted for John Kerry, you know, back when I was a Democrat. But I wasn't voting against George Bush. I was voting for a guy that I thought would maybe probably be a better guy to fight the war in Iraq now. Hindsight being twenty twenty, probably maybe not the best vote I've ever cast in my life. But I wasn't voting against George Bush. I think a lot of people did back then. He still won anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah, vote your conscience, people. Don't don't just vote because the guy's got a D next to his name or the girl or whoever. And if you're voting for a woman because you're a woman and you think a woman needs to be in the Senate, the libertarian candidate is a woman. You know, she she's a, she cares about women's issues too. I don't know. Anyways, give her a shot. And now we're going to be talking to Roman Daniels. All right, everybody. I have my uh, guest for this week with me. His name is Roman Daniels. You can catch him on Twitter at Roman Daniels XXX. And if you haven't gotten clued in by now, he is an adult film star for Helix Studio. Um, how are you doing, Roman? He's also a personal friend of mine. I'm very, I'm very good. Very, very good. Awesome. So, yeah, uh, you having fun out there? You said you just, you, know, you were just telling me that you just had pride out there in San Diego, right? Yeah. The mm-hmm. studio that I model for is at Helix. They even have like a booth and everything, and I have the booth works with helps work the booth and everything. I'm sure that was lots of fun. So you were uh, you're a model for Helix Studios, which is a uh, I would say more it's a, it's known for what kind of guy would you say what, what what kind of studio would you say Helix is? Helix is uh, uh, pretty much a twink, a hundred percent twink. There's like a few jocks on there, but it's it's centered around being a twink studio. Twinks awesome. are just kind of like younger looking guys, you know, generally from you know, 18 to 23. Young, beautiful looking guys, <laughs> just mm-hmm. like yourself. Yeah, and not um, bad. Well, you know, I've known you for a while now, so I can talk to you, you know, I can call, I can yeah. say you're beautiful all I want. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so, 
I just have a few questions about, you know, because I've always wondered, you know, I've never done adult films, and I've always wondered, like, being a model, what it, what that life is kind of like. So I figured I came up with a few questions I can ask you, and if you just want to just kind of let me know and clue me in. So first off, um, I kind of, when I watch uh, adult film, you know, when I'm watching it, I really like to watch the scenes where the two uh, – the two models in the scene really like each other because then I feel like it's more authentic and more fun. So who would you say that you've worked with is your favorite? What's your favorite scene or your favorite partner you've worked with on set? Um, I would say Seth and Nash. Really? Okay. Mm-hmm. And so, like, oh, God, I'm losing my track. Don't worry. We can edit this all out, baby. <laughs> you're fine. And you're fine. That's what that. happens when I, smoke, when I talk to people in an interview. So, she, his name is Kevin Nash. What, what, Stephen Nash? Kevin Nash. Stephen Nash. Basketball. It's Kevin S-T-E- Nash. No, Stephen. Stephen. Jesus Christ. Okay. You, so, Stephen Nash <laughs> is your favorite guy to work with. This is going to make great editing for my producer right here. He's smiling at me. Okay. So, Stephen Nash is your favorite guy to work with. What is it about him that you say, like, really turns you on? Like, is he just really particularly good at anything, or, like, is he just really physically attracted to you? Um, He's just, like, my ideal type. He's tall, nice. blonde, beautiful eyes. We have very, very similar ideal types. Great eyes. Um, you are from, uh, so you're out in San Diego now. So where are you, like, from originally? I'm from Ohio. From Ohio. And so what makes a what makes a good boy from Ohio go, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna become a helix model? Like what what made you kinda wanna do uh what kinda made you wanna do it all? Uh one of my like really close friends got into it and he just talked it up and told me how like how fun it is and like where you get to go and he told me all about it and I was just kind of I was like, Okay, well yeah. <laughs> Get me out of high. I'd love to go to California. Awesome. And I'm sure he looks a really real fun party to work with. I mean, oh yeah, awesome. they're really fun to work for. Like you kind of well, like yeah. you kind of play and work at the same time. Mhm. Well, I imagine you know you get to have a lot of fun experiences working with a studio like that. I mean, they're all over the internet. You know, uh, I see. Granted, I mean, I see a lot of time. I see a lot of Helix ads see a lot of Helix movies, you know, so I know that I'm sure there's a lot of fun and interesting things. So, like, is there any, like, weird or funny stories that you've ever had on the set? Like, has anything crazy ever happened while you're trying to film or anything like that? Have you ever had, like, I don't know, have you ever been in a room and somebody who does not know the foreign film is going on or just walks in or anything like that? Have you ever had a weird story? Um, uh, I mean, uh, I've had a couple different things. I mean, like, we've been, like, you know, we film and, like, we film outside sometimes. And, yeah. Like, some people just know that we're Helix models. So they'll sit there, like, stand there and watch. Like, <laughs> creepishly, like, and get, like, as close, they'll, like, they'll test the water and they'll get as close as they can until, like, one of the directors has to, like, like shoo them away. That's great. Well, see, I'm not going to lie, Roman. If I was... If I was in San Diego and I saw two Helix models uh, doing their thing, you know, I would definitely have the binoculars to the telescope out. I mean, you know. I I wouldn't have binoculars as well, but when you're standing, like, five feet from us and getting, like, cluster (laughs) and cluster, you just push the buttons. That's a little weird. Like, you just all of a sudden see some dude edging into the frame for the shot. Yeah. That's uh, that's going to be pretty awkward. If I didn't get out of edging, that'd be awkward. So, you know, so when you film a scene, it doesn't, I mean, okay, so it seems like 20 minutes long when you're watching online, and, you know, most people hopefully make it to the end of that. I like to think that they do. But uh, <laughs> so, it seems like, so it seems like 20 minutes long. How long does that, like, take to get 20 minutes of filming? Like, how long do you literally have to be doing that, you know, going at it, basically, to get 20 minutes of um, filming? Anything from, like, one to two. One to eight or nine hours. It, I mean, like, I've never, eight? I just, I've never had, I think my longest is like four or five. 
But oh, I've heard shit. like I've heard like eight or nine. That is, you know what? I think people don't to... realize that like porn, it gets like it, it can, it's fine, but it's also like there's a lot of work into it. That's a lot of work. That's a lot of work for your dick. I mean, that is a lot. <laughs> And I make mean, your whole body like we have like yeah, the I mean, I stuff imagine, that we like, have to do. We have to make sure that the camera can see it. it. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, a lot of those positions are hard to get into, and if you're in them for twenty or thirty minutes or four hours, I imagine you get a few cramps. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely a few cramps. Well, if you boys ever need a masseuse on set, I'm really good with my hands, so I, you know, <laughs> I could fly out there to San Diego tomorrow. To really help you guys, I could be very therapeutic. I'm, I work for cheap. So. Send the office an application. That would be That's great. Referral. <laughs> I'm also, you know, I, I could be an excellent fluffer. I could do whatever you guys need. I can mop the floor. I'm down. Okay, so. <laughs> so I was talking about you cramping and you said, you know, sometimes you're in a position for a long time. What is your favorite position to do when you're filming a scene? Like what, what is your favorite way uh, to go about it? Um, probably the pile driver. So you're usually a top, correct? If you want to know what a yeah. pile driver is, by the way, listeners, just Google it. I'm sure there's a term on Urban Dictionary. But, uh, or you'll get <laughs> So you're usually a top when you film, right? Mm-hmm. And that's, uh, well, obviously we all know why everybody's a top when they're filming. It's because they're, they're, uh, well endowed, so to speak. So, um, basically everybody can find you at Roman Daniels XXX on Twitter. And he likes you got it's a subscription service, right? It's a subscription porn service. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. So they can find you at helix.com, and we'll definitely put a link to that when we uh, when we post this thing because I think a lot of people it's actually helixstudios.net actually. See there you go. See correcting me. That is exactly what I'm helixstudios.net. Mm-hmm. Great. Because I know, and yeah, the other one would have sent them to some sort of weird website that's not sexy, beautiful, young guys. <laughs> so um, let's take a quick break real quick, and we'll be right back with Roman Daniels after this. Hey, everybody. Chase here, and I wanted to talk to you guys for a minute about uh, my Patreon page and what Patreon is and how you can help uh, the podcast uh, stay free and uh, basically help it grow and do all kinds of new things uh, that will be entertaining for you, the listener. So Patreon is a page. You can get to it by linking uh, at GabeDixie.com. There's a big ad right there for it, so just click on that. It'll take you right where you need to go. And you can pledge monthly to help this podcast out. And uh, pledges start at $2 a month, and you know um, each level that you go up gets you more and more um, from us. So... For instance, you know, the $2 level, that gets a, you know, a big thank you from us, you know. Everybody uh, who pledges $2 a month um, really gets, you know, they get access to a Patreon feed that is uh, only for people who subscribe, and a big juicy thank you from me at Gay Dixie. Now, if you pledge $5 more a month, you'll get a shout-out on the show by name, and you'll get access to solo uh, bonus episodes that I do, and this is kind of a great way, if you don't know me, to get to know me a little bit better. Um, I'll talk about things outside of Gay Dixie that matter to me, and that uh, kind of gives you a little bit more of a glimpse of Chase the person. Now, one level up from that is $10 more a month. And if you donate $10, you know, if you uh, subscribe for $10 more a month, you get uh, access to a private Facebook group we're going to put together, and you're kind of joining the team. And you'll have the ability to help uh, create future episodes and future content for episodes and basically give me things to talk about and broadcast about. So, you know, you'll be a part of the team. And not only will your $10 a month be going to help us out, it'll be going to uh, help create content for the show. And with that, you'll also get a signed poster from me uh, for Gay Dixie. It'll be, have our logo on it right there so you can put it on your wall. And uh, you'll be entered to win a quarterly prize pack from me, which will have all kinds of goodies that I find and decide to send to whoever wins. And on top of that, you'll also get access to special video content from GayDixie.com. Um, you know, whatever I happen to decide to film, I'll put out there for you, uh, the listener, to become you, the viewer. And uh, by the way, every level you go, you get 
what's on that level plus everything that's in the lower level. So the more you give, the more you get. Um, the next level up is $25 or more per month. You'll get a free T-shirt uh, or hat to be determined. We you know, are going to put some merch together, and you'll be the one of the first people to get the merch because you're helping us uh, to create it. So you'll definitely, definitely get it. It'll be something tangible you can have. Um, something else you'll get is a 15-minute personal Skype chat with me. We can talk about anything you want. You know, uh, it just gives me a chance to get to know you guys, the people who are really giving uh, a little bit better, and kind of get some feedback from you guys because that's what I really want. I think podcasts are all about feedback. Now, not only do you get a 15-minute Skype chat with me, but you also get access to a special video podcast that I will do in my underwear. I know I'm selling my body, but that's what you got to do sometimes. And so access to all the underwear video podcasts that I do. Not only that, you'll become a producer on the show. You'll get a credit on the end of the show. And if you own a business or just want to push your Instagram or whatever, we'll give you one free ad per year on Gay Dixie and at GayDixie.com. So, you know, if you give $25 more a month, not only do you help the podcast, but you can help yourself and help your business. Now, $50 a month or more or more is our top level. Now, you will get all of the above. All that other stuff I've just been saying for the last three or four minutes. And on top of that, you will get an ad on the Gay Dixie podcast bi-monthly and a regular uh, ad as well on GayDixie.com. And if you want, and if you have a story to tell, we will have you on as a guest uh, appearance, guest co-host on Gay Dixie. So if you really want to tell your story and you know, uh, or want to really push your business, if you own you know, a business that caters to gay people, come on, we'll talk about it for a whole episode, just me and you, just like friends. And uh, so this is all on our Patreon page. And like I said, you can get there by going to GayDixie.com and clicking on the Patreon banner ad. And uh, thank you guys in advance, and anybody who pledges, like I said, you get a big personal thank you from me. All right, everybody, we're back with Roman Daniels. Uh, film star for Helix Studios. You can catch him on Twitter at Roman Daniels XXX. Or if you want to email him to get maybe a signed DVD, you can email him at RomanDaniels20 at gmail.com, which I didn't even know I could get a signed DVD. That's pretty awesome, dude. Of course. See, of course. You, start, yeah, you guys are very accommodating, I have to say. <clears throat> we try our best. <laughs> so... Um, speaking of accommodating, you actually, I accommodated you for a little while earlier this year. You actually lived with me for like three weeks earlier in the year, which I have to say was a whole hell of a lot of fun. Three? I only stayed with you guys for like It was like three week. weeks, wasn't it? No, I only stayed with you guys oh, for like one Oh, it felt like three. It was like... It, I was only in Atlanta for like three weeks. <laughs> I thought you stayed with us for a while. Anyways, however the hell long it was. It was a lot of fun having you because at the time I was working nights and you were working nights there too while you're in you're in town working <laughs> right. and and so basically the day consisted of us waking up in the morning, um, uh, taking our medicine, you know, take that for what it's worth. We took our morning out and just really had a good old time, which is where like I got to really know you there because I had I had met you before obviously, and then uh, you were coming in town and you were like, hey, you know. My roommate offered to let you, you know, was like, hey, let's crash here. And so I really got to know you really well during that time. And I like to say, man, you're a really awesome guy. I know I'm just talking you up, right? Well, thank you. You're an awesome guy. Oh, well, you know, thank you. But (laughs) when you came to Atlanta, I really felt like I got to know you. And it was like the first time I'd ever got to really know somebody in the uh, adult film industry, like on a real level. You know, and so it kind of made me think about things. Okay, so I do have one more uh, one more question about Helix. So Helix is like a twink studio, and you know we all get older. I'm about to be in my last year of my twenties. You know, I'm getting nearer to thirty every day, and so like I have a question. Like, so eventually you're going to kind of I guess age out, so to speak. You know, in a while. Uh, mm-hmm. Do you plan on like just continuing with different studios, or do you think that that will be the end of your adult film career, or do you think you're just going to keep going and find another studio? Because there's a lot of studios that like like guys who are older than a twink. You know, there's a lot of guys 
there's a big money out there right now, especially for like the quote unquote college jock type, you know? Yeah. And so would you ever want to like, I don't know, work into that? Are you going to bulk up one day and become a big, you know, muscle daddy in 10 years? Like, what's it going to be? Like, what, what do you feel like you're going to do in adult film after Helix? Uh, you know, I probably won't, like, um, you know, I'll probably film for Helix for, as, you know, as long as I can, as long as I'm young. But I'm going to <laughs> I'm going to school here shortly, and so awesome. you know after I finish school, I probably won't you know I won't really continue porn. I had uh, a lot of fun doing it with Helix, and I'd probably want to just leave it at that. Well, that's you know that's understandable, man. And like you know, you're uh, you're doing it till you get the degree, and you go into a different career. So I completely understand that. But uh, yeah, yes, yeah, because so I, I was just wondering because you know some guys I'm sure leave the industry and some guys I just guess continue on, you know? Yeah. And there's a lot, like I said, there's a lot of studios out there that, you know, there's porn for every type of guy. If you want to see grandpa's having sex, I'm sure you can find it online somewhere, you know? Okay. Oh yeah. It's time for a lightning round. And okay. So I'm going to ask you a few questions and most of them are like two options. And I want you to pick one. So okay. I just want you to pick whichever you think is better. Do you like a guy who has pubes or no pubes? Do you like that porn star shaved look or do you like pubes? Pubes. Like, do you like the guy to have hair on him? Mm-hmm. So I like which do you prefer? I like the guy. Do you like a guy with hair on him? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, the next one's an underwear question. Now, this can either be what do you prefer to wear or what do you prefer your your uh, lover to be wearing. <laughs> do you like the look of a thong or a jock better? Mm, I prefer low-rise briefs. You prefer briefs? Oh, option mm-hmm. C. Awesome. Okay. Now, these are two big names in porn. Now, I want to. Now, if you could have worked with either of these guys in their prime, you know, they're all, they're both a bit older now. Who would you rather work with, Jeff Stryker or Ron Jeremy? Well, I don't know what Jeff Stryker looks like, but because I do know what Ron Jeremy looks like, I'm going to go with the, with the Jeff Stryker guy. <laughs> That's a great answer, man. Okay, so uh, this question I've been asking lately. So you live in California, where gay marriage is legal and uh, medicinal marijuana is legal. Wink, wink, medicinal. You know, it's pretty much legal there. So my question is, what do you think is going to be legal in all 50 states first, marijuana or gay marriage? Do you think they're going to let me smoke a joint first or marry a man first? Oh, that's a good one. Mm. Gay marriage. Gay marriage seems to be moving a lot faster. Yeah, you know, it does seem to be moving pretty fast. They passed it in Florida. So, you know, if it can happen in Florida, I guess it can happen anywhere. Okay, so this yeah. next one. This yeah, one, next one. Oh, yeah. Well, this next one's a bit of an uh, entertainment question. So there's two big names out there in music, and you either kind of fall in one camp or the other. Are you more of a Gaga guy or are you more of a Beyonce guy? Like, who would you rather listen to or meet? Um, Beyonce. Yeah, that's kind of been taking the cake. I'm thinking Gaga is no longer as popular as she once was. I, I'm thinking oh. the evidence is starting to mount. <laughs> okay, oh, no. well, I haven't really. Beyonce just has had like so much incredible music coming out lately. Oh yeah, and her videos have been amazing, and her concerts. Yeah. Are awesome. Yeah, she's kind of the new. Uh, she's kind of the new Madonna, I guess. <laughs> well. Roman, thank you so much for coming on and doing this interview with me because I've always wanted to talk to you about, you know, a little bit about the industry and whatnot, and I was looking for awesome people to come on my podcast, and I knew I could count on you to come on there with me. So thank you so much. Thank you for having uh, me. Awesome. Well, we're going to end this interview, ladies and gentlemen, but uh, hopefully we'll be hearing from Roman one day. If you ever come to Atlanta, baby, you got to come do the podcast with me live. Oh, my God, I will. I'm, I'm sure I'll be in Atlanta sometime. Okay, well, definitely make sure you hit me up. All right. Well, I'll talk to you later, baby. All right. Have a good one. Thank you for the show. Um.
Well, that was Roman Daniels, uh, my good buddy from Helix Studios. And uh, for the end of this episode, I just kind of wanted to talk about what my goals are for this podcast. I've been thinking a lot about it. You know, i got a few short-term and kind of long-term goals. And uh, one of my long-term goals is for over the next year, I want to kind of uh, do more for you, the listener. And... Uh, I want to attend some prides, I want to make as much video content as I can, and there are two great ways to really help me do that. And one of those is uh, to become a subscriber on our Patreon, which uh, if you go to GayDixie.com, there's a really big ad right there at the bottom for Patreon. Go there and check it out. Check out how you can help us out monthly. You know, every subscriber is, you know, a help to us, helps us make a better show for, for, for you, and... Go there, check it out. There's a bunch of different things you can get depending on what you subscribe to. You know, we have all kinds of goodies. Heck, I'm even going to do video podcasts in my underwear for you people if you donate enough. So I'm looking for people to help me because I want to go to Southern Decadence next year. And I want to make a lot of awesome content. So that way those of you who don't get to go actually get to experience it. And I want to go to, you know, uh, you know, what is it, Fort Lauderdale Pride. I want to go see the South. I want to make Gay Dixie a real thing. I want to not just be here in Atlanta. I love Atlanta, and I love, you know, it being here in Georgia. But I want to maybe go to Alabama and Mississippi and meet people who are actually gay out there in the middle of Dixie. That's why I want you to check out our Patreon page and uh, give it a look and see, you know, if you just got two dollars a month to spare, that helps a lot. It helps cover the bandwidth to keep this podcast up and uh, every other little thing that comes up. Another way, great way you can help is check out our Amazon wish list. There, there's another link there at gaydixie.com for our Amazon wish list. Click on it. Check it out. You know, if you got the money to spare, I'm not saying everybody's rich, but, you know, if you won the lottery this week, we could really use some cameras and microphones or even things like memory cards to help make this podcast easier to get to, easier to record, and better for you. Um, and that's pretty much it for this week. Uh, as always, if you have any comments or want to get in touch with me, make sure you email me at chase at gaydixie.com. And uh, speaking of emailing me, if you happen to be an independent artist, somebody who uh, makes music and maybe not be, you know, if you're not signed to a record label, and you want to get some exposure, contact me. I'm looking for featured artists that I can kind of uh, feature throughout the podcast, and you know, not just musical artists. If you're a visual artist and you want to, if you want to draw something that to you speaks Gay Dixie, we'd love to put that on our Facebook or on our website. We'll definitely shout you out and give you all the credit in the world. But uh, send anything like that to Chase at GayDixie.com. And I hope you guys have a great Gay Dixie week.